welcome to the No Budget Indie Filmcast, where we dip into the independent film universe to highlight this, highlight those little films that you might not have heard about elsewhere. Will you agree with our panel, or will they agree with each other? Tune in to find out. I'm Milo Dennison, and with me is Claire Milan. Hello. And it's just the two of us tonight. No call. Yes. Me. I wonder where Carl's gone on holidays. We think yeah. we don't know where exactly. <laughs> I think the movie's movie choice for tonight was too trippy for him and he just Yeah, I think so. He likes like, you know, kind of superhero films and very simple plots and all that. So this <laughs> yeah, is exactly. way over his head. Yeah, so, totally. Yeah. So we are talking about what did Jack do by the great and wonderful uh David Lynch. I had to I was like babbling there because I couldn't remember his name for some stupid reason. So that's my Alzheimer's kicking in. Uh, so David Lynch. So what this is, is picture one of his older films, like Eraserhead or something, where it's really black and white, scratchy film, really dark in areas, uh, it, that type of film. And it takes place in one room, which uh, amounts for a train station. And David Lynch wrote, directed, and stars in this film. And he is an interrogator sitting across the street interrogating a potential criminal played by a little monkey. And what he did for this film is they did the uh, deep fake kind of thing with the mouth of the monkey. So they have the monkey talking and David's character is trying to basically interrogate him. And it's done in typical David Lynch fashion in the sense of they're sometimes responding to what the other is saying. Sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't. It has this feel of like you uh, it took some kind of a recording or something and then decided just to kind of randomly respond to the recording or something and, and see how it plays out. Or at times it feels like that game of questions that, that, that they play in Rosencrantz and Guildenstern's are dead, where everything you have to respond with everything with a question so you're not actually answering anything. And that kind of a feel to it. Um, David's smoking his cigarettes, drinking his coffee, and it goes on like that until it dips into a musical number where the monkey sings to us. And that is a David Lynch film called What Did Jack Do? Do you know what? I'm so glad that you actually uh, talked about the synopsis of it because I wouldn't have a clue <laughs> how to synopsis, synopsize this film like talking monkey <laughs> do you know but it, it's quite interesting I'm not a massive fan of David Lynch but maybe I haven't given him a chance like enough of a chance because I've seen Mulholland Drive um, very recently because everyone was talking about it and I just didn't get it but maybe his films are meant to be watched twice or three times and with this <laughs> yeah. one when I first started watching it I got a bit of a shock at first oh god talking monkey <laughs> and uh, I actually um I was like what the heck is that about I thought I missed something so I went back and watched it a second time and I really enjoyed it because I, I kind of knew what was coming up and it made more sense um and I just thought it was quite interesting this like the kind of look of it it's like an old style with a film noir style kind of yeah, thing definitely. Um, and I was reading that he actually built the little chair for the monkey himself. <laughs> so I read about it and this was, um, uh, I think this was premiered in France when he was doing a book, a nude book or something I read. So you probably know, I don't know if you know. But yeah, I saw he was it premiered in France. I didn't yeah. know that he was doing a book tour when it premiered. Yeah, and apparently this was screened at it or at the same time as it. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was, it was how would I describe it? It wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea. And I, I think I love the simplicity of it. When you first see it, the setup is so simple, yet it's very effective the way he does it. So I think a lot of filmmakers, including myself, can look at this and see how a simple setup, but extremely well written and with a lot of layers can make a really good short film. And it doesn't yeah, have was, to be really complicated. <laughs> I was and, thinking that too when mm -hmm. I watched it. I'm like, God, like I'm in my head, like, how could I do this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I think, and it just shows you that it can be done very simply with a script. Because you think about the setup, um, it is such a simple setup, but yet it's so effective and so layered that you do go back and watch it again. And it, it is 17 minutes long. So it's quite of a, and a longer side of short films. 
But yeah, there, there's a lot of layers to it. It's quite interesting that you were, you were saying that the kind of the answer with a question. You know, I must look. I have to rewatch the third time <laughs> to, to find <laughs> well, other things, and I would never do that. Originally, that was in there. You know, they, no. <laughs> well, they even like the monkey's eyes. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I just thought like um, the monkey's eyes and just the way he was looking. He probably had um, a trainer or something with a banana, <laughs> you know, <laughs> shaking something. But yeah, and he, he, you you really got sucked in for to the monkey as an actor. Mm-hmm. And you really, when especially when he's talking, you could see him acting behind his eyes, even though he couldn't under, he <laughs> he wouldn't be able to understand <laughs> what he's saying. But camera, yeah. it's so weird the way it makes you think the monkey is understanding what he's saying when he's when they use that effect of him talking. And um, I love the bit where um, he sees the the chicken. Or the, whatever oh, the heck, yeah. the chicken, and he starts screaming, <laughs> and his teeth, and his teeth are so human. Yeah, and that kind of freaked me out. Yeah, and then the transition into the song, I was like, "This is bizarre." But the second time, I was like, "I actually really like this." And the first time, I was like, "This is too weird." <laughs> but the transition, it's it's, you feel so sorry for the monkey. Like just I do anyway. Um, but, but the monkey might be guilty. You shouldn't feel sorry for I him. I know. <laughs> I know, but it's just something. And then he, he said he was like, he's, he's small, you know, it's like, you see how small he is when he jumps down. Yeah. And it's just like, I kind of feel sorry for the monkey. But <laughs> I, does David Lynch act in his own, all his own films or is it just Not all singing? of them. Um, no. I'm trying to think if, I'm, I'm, I, I think he does cameos in, in all of them uh, at some okay. point. I'm trying to yeah. think if I can, I've seen Blue Velvet a couple of times and I'm trying to think where he appears in that and i'd recommend if as an introduction to david lynch watch blue velvet because okay. it's the most coherent story i think of yeah. pretty much anything he's done it actually <laughs> make you can watch it and it actually follows through and you're like okay that actually makes ah. sense to where some of his other stuff doesn't but i don't remember I, i'm sure he he was in blue velvet but i for the life of me can't think of what it was i'm sure he's quite a good actor actually isn't he you know comment correcting me <laughs> what sorry go ahead yeah. sorry he's quite a good actor he is very you know, talented yeah. he's I, he's such genius like he's he can act he writes he directs he paints um I, yeah, he's such a talented person it, but it is interesting how how out there he is in stuff because i would have never thought of something like this that yeah. that's what makes him so brilliant yeah, and it is, and even like the lighting, like the whole setup of it was fascinating. The simple setup, even the graininess of the the yeah. the, the footage and the film noir aspect to it, the talking monkey. It's someone who's who's operating at a higher level. <laughs> like his his brain, I'd say he never stops. I'd say he's either painting or writing. You know, his guy, I'd say, is always has a few things on the go. And this is probably one of his side projects. He just thought, listen, I'll do this because I have a week off, you know? Yeah, totally. He's <laughs> like, yeah, I a couple of days. Uh, let's uh, grab yeah. my, you know, cinematographer fan, friend. We'll get a monkey and shoot a film. <laughs> and also, I must say, it's so good that Netflix are showing short films. Yeah. Because this is the second one I've seen. I know they're very famous short films, but hopefully it's a trend that they will continue to show them because it makes them more accessible to the general public. Because I know we go out and we we go after short films, but usually my non-filmmaker friends wouldn't see them, you know. So it's so good that this is happening and I hope Netflix keep it up. Yeah, me too, actually. Like, uh, uh, because of the ones I've seen on there so far, they've all been pretty good and it'd be nice to uh, have them keep it going. All right. Well, should we rate it since we don't have call hall to... uh... Okay. So for me, uh, thank you for choosing it, first of all, because I'm going through a phase the moment of watching all these classic films. And uh, it's, yeah, it was at first I was like, oh, this is too strange. The second time, I really like it. And it's different and simple. I will make you think. So I'm going to give it four stars. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I, I'm uh, I'm, a, I'm a big David Lynch fan in general. And we, you're right. It, it just does something nice and simple, but weird enough to keep you interested. And to when you're done watching it, you're like, what the fuck was that? And it kind of leaves you thinking about it afterwards. And I like that in a film sometimes when I'm thinking about it and be like, okay, I, I need to watch that again because I know there's stuff in there I missed. 
All right, No Budget Filmcast listeners. So we liked this film. It is available on Netflix. It's called What Did Jack Do? And we would recommend you go out and check it out. Let us know what you think via a comment, via a review, via reaching out to us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at No Budget Show. And until next time, we'll say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.